Hi everyone, hope you are all doing well and welcome back to another video on New World. So today I want to break down my top 10 tips for new players getting into New World. I've seen a lot of comments over the past few weeks on some of my other videos and so these are sort of the most commonly asked questions or mistakes that new players seem to be making and hopefully we can put you back on the right track. So let's go right ahead and dive in with tip number one and that is spawn dying. There are currently no mounts in New World and this isn't necessarily a bad thing most of the time but when you get sent to a quest on the far side of a region just to collect a few chests and then have to do a one and a half kilometer walk back to town to hand that quest in it can be quite time consuming. However if you press escape, game menu and then respawn your character will die but it's going to give you the option to respawn back at the nearest town, which is often where you're going to need to go for the quest hand in anyway. There is of course a consequence for this, and that is gear durability damage. However, particularly in the early game, you'll be changing your equipment so regularly and getting so much spare stuff to actually salvage, it really isn't worth worrying about. Furthermore, you can even spawn die to your camp, so if you have a quest chain out in the middle of a region, you can just set your camp next to the hand in and repeat the spawn dying process there, and it can save you a lot of time and an awful lot of walking. For tip number two, this is probably the most asked question I've seen, and that is, where can I find X resources? That be it hemp, iron ore nodes, or even river crest for a quest or ironwood trees to level logging. And there are really two ways to go about this. Firstly, you could just use the in-game map. It doesn't give you specific item locations, but it is coloured to represent different geographical regions. For example, over here in the mountains area, and if we look at the corresponding key for that, then it tells us the sort of resources we might be able to expect to find there, such as iron. However, it is quite a large area, and it's going to take quite a bit of exploring to find just our one iron node down in that area. And I think a much better way of finding those resources is to use the truly awesome tool of New World Map, which pinpoints exact resource locations like the iron nodes in the mountains. And it even allows you to locate those sort of harder to find resources such as Rivercrest. It is an awesome tool to help you find resources, particularly at the start when we kick off in August because it is going to be a lot of players all hunting very limited amounts of iron, hemp etc and this is really going to give you the edge to not spend your entire time searching around a region which everyone else has already extracted from resources. So for tip number three I want to stress how much easier the game can be if you run in a group. It is of course not essential and can be very much enjoyed solo but running in a group really allows you to tackle much higher level areas. You can start taking quests that are four, five or six or more levels above your character level and still work your way through them in the team. Since you don't find yourself outnumbered against multiple monsters at once, you can tackle tougher monsters with a group. It is even better though if one of the people in your group is a healer, as you can then tack the damage in the group and really be kept in the fight by that healer. It really makes a difference. And furthermore, so long as you're grouped and have recently been in combat, when your friend around the corner kills one of those 12 wolves you need for that quest, it'll count for you as well. So you can really rapidly speed up the kill quests. And, if nothing else, it's just more fun to run with a group of friends. Fastest way to level your character in New World is always going to be a topic of some discussion. Particularly as things like faction quests, town projects and corrupted portals are all getting their AXP rates regularly adjusted by the developers for balance. In my opinion, this leaves the fastest core way to level as the side quests and the main quest. Yes, town projects have been quite effective during the beta, but their XP rewards have been nerfed a few times already and I'd expect the same again before launch. That's not to say it's not worth taking these quests, I mean, it absolutely is. Just don't depend on them as your core leveling method. They're just a supplementary method to the side quests. For the side quests, you're going to be wanting to work through the quests in First Light, Windswood, Monarch's Bluff, and Everfall up to around 25 before tackling probably the Amrine Excavation and moving on to Brightwood for your next set of side quests. 
Beyond that, you're probably going to be moving on to Cutler's Keys and Weaver's Fen after that. And since we're on the topic of leveling, another good sort of sideway is Elite Zones. They can be quite a good way of gaining XP. The monsters have a really good respawn rate and you can expect around 100 XP per monster killed. And the loot drops do tend to be much more attractive, so it's quite an effective way of gear farming. For tip number five, I want to talk about joining a faction. Quite a few people have been asking, is it sort of compulsory to join a faction? When am I going to be joining a faction? And in short, the answer is yes, it is compulsory. Around about level 10, the main questing line will basically force you to choose between Marauders, Covenant and Syndicate. I can't tell you which faction to join, that's something you've got to decide for yourself. But when selected, you are not going to be able to change faction again for another 120 days. Furthermore, you can only join companies tied to your faction. So if all your friends are Go Marauders and you're hoping perhaps to join their company, you also need to be selecting Marauders or else you won't be able to join their company. For tip number six, I want to briefly talk about PvP in New World. The main point I want to highlight here is that when you lose a PvP fight and get killed, the only thing you're going to lose is a little bit of item durability. And as I said at the start of this video for my first tip, that really isn't too much of a loss. So think about turning on the PvP flag and giving it a try out. You don't have to have it on all the time. I certainly don't. If I'm just chilling out, running a few quests or playing on my laptop, I leave it off. But it can be awesome fun when you get stuck into some really decent 1v1 fights versus another player. And if you come out victorious, it's actually a really great way to gain XP, weapon mastery and faction points. You do have to watch out for sort of groups of enemy players. Sometimes they do camp outside the cities. If they do that, just leave it off. But when the opportunity allows, it can be really good fun. Hopefully, I'll manage to get actually a separate video out this beta covering PvP in a little bit more detail, so do keep an eye out for that. For tip number seven, I want to talk about Azoth. This is the key resource that will not only be used for fast traveling, but you're also going to be using it in crafting. There are currently a few ways to get Azoth in New World. You'll be mostly getting it, at least initially, from doing the main storyline quests. But this is obviously a fine out amount. The main storyline quest does not go on forever, it ends eventually. You will also find that you get plus 10 Azoth drops from killing some monsters around level 30, particularly the undead, and this raises to plus 15 once you get to monster level 50. You'll also occasionally get vials of Azoth as random drops. You can open these and actually gain a small amount of Azoth, or you can store them in your inventory or your bank until things get low. You can even get a perk on your tools that gives you plus Azoth for mining, skinning or harvesting. So, in reality, there are a few ways of getting Azoth. And with the current cap of 1000, which personally I think is honestly way too low and the devs should really increase it, you'll often find that you hit the limit quite easily, particularly once you're running that main story quest, and so any extra Azoth you're gaining is wasted. So, so long as you aren't being super wasteful and excessive with your fast travelling, then you really should be fine. Also, whilst we're touching on the topic of fast travel, Azoth cost for fast travel is a factor of three things. Distance, uh, town faction ownership, and encumbrance. You can't easily change the first two. Obviously, distance is the reason you're fast travelling in the first place, and to capture a whole town for one fast travel is probably excessive. But encumbrance, you can really do a lot about. If you've got an inventory full of crap, you'll be paying a lot more Azoth to fast travel. So get rid of it. Travel light. Finally, the most important tip or question in the game, wear sheep. In short, no one knows. They're almost impossible to find and far from worth it. Ignore the sheep town quests and you'll be much happier for it. But silly sheep tips aside, hopefully there has been some helpful information in this video. If you are new to the game, there is certainly quite a lot to learn and pick up. So if you've got any questions, do ask me in the comments down below and I'll do my best to try and get back to you and help you out. Got a lot more videos coming on New World, so do subscribe to the channel for a lot more New World content. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you all in the next one.